The following is a paid commercial program. Unless otherwise identified, the guests on the program are employees of or otherwise represent the advertiser. The opinions expressed therein are those of the advertiser and do not necessarily reflect the views and policies of Global News Radio 640 Toronto. Good morning and welcome to Your Life, Your Money here on Global News Radio 640 Toronto. I am Chris Creston and I'm joined as always by the money guy. That's right, Kelvin the Money Guy, and you can visit his website, askkelvin.ca. That's ask, K-E-L-V-I-N dot C-A, and you can call him anytime, 416-457-7526. That's 416-457-PLAN. And you know, it's that uh, time of year, we're in, in the fall, we might, you know, kids are going back to school, reassessing things and uh, trying to decide, uh, you know, maybe things that we were doing right, things we're doing wrong. You know, that's probably a broader conversation for the entire pandemic. You know, a lot of us are trying to reassess, you know, where we work, how we work, what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong. And that's what we're really going to dig into here with Kelvin, the money guy. Uh, we're going to be talking about, you know, what's wrong with your financial planning? What's wrong with mine? Wait, what's wrong with me? Maybe Kelvin can, well, I don't know if Kelvin can answer all those questions, but uh, I, I might need a, a, an expensive uh, therapist to find out exactly what's wrong with me. But for the financial side of things, I know Kelvin is always a good guy to have in your corner and a good guy to talk to about these things. He's one of Canada's top financial planners and uh, just an overall nice guy again 416-457-7526 is his phone number and askkelvin.ca that's ask k-e-l-v-i-n dot c-a and i'm talking about the guy why not talk to the guy kelvin the money guy is here and he's going to help us find out what's wrong with us what's wrong with our financial planning and how we can fix it kelvin how you doing today hey chris good morning how was things good good you know uh, it's uh it's been a busy year, a busy fall, mm-hmm. hitting the ground running here mm-hmm. and uh, you know, trying to sort of make sure that we're on top of things. And so many things are always put off till later or put off till, uh, you know, Saturday. Don't worry, yeah. I'll do it Saturday. Yeah. Uh, well, it's Sunday and it's not done yet. And so that can happen with a lot of our financial decisions, too. There's a lot of, you know, sometimes long term planning or sometimes short-term planning somewhere we're, we're not finding the right mix and we're wondering how can we do it better. And that's often the times, you know, a, a good reason to have a guy like you in, in our corner. Well, first of all, it's nice to see life is trying to get back to normal. Mm-hmm. School is back. Uh, football is back. Right. Right. <laughs> so a lot of things are slowly starting to get back, hopefully to some type of normal. So I thought about, you know, I get questions from clients and just people in general when I speak to them. And I want to say the biggest problem with to identify the biggest problem with financial planning and more importantly, how can we fix it? So financial planning really involves many things, you know. It it involves our money, our efforts, our goals, our personality, and our behavior, actually. You know, it's a it's a long-term activity that extends into many years and sometimes many decades. You know, why we try to do our best to plan our finances, we do run into, into some problems. Um, and I think after all these years of doing this, I think our biggest problem is our behavior. That's you know probably true of so many things in life. Yeah. You know, what's the biggest problem in my marriage? Probably my behavior. Right. Yeah, actually, you can, you, you actually, you're right. It's not just about money, but mm. I thought, I mean, you know, our behavior towards financial, financial or our finances is a crucial aspect in financial planning. We have so many things that affect us, like our social, emotional factors. Mm-hmm. You know, I find that plays an important role or in making your decisions. And sometimes our behavior Um, makes us behave in a manner that is not in our best interests of our financial status because our emotions get in the way right and it takes over common sense right and i and that's why i think people need a financial advisors because we can help in so many ways if you have an advisor reach out to them and have the conversation it's the fall we're starting the fall i guess 
when the 22nd, I guess, of September, when it starts, they say. So I always say in past shows, you know, you should review your portfolio, your investments, your life, whenever there's a change of season. Mm. So it gives you, what, four times a year um, to review where you are. And more importantly, where are you going? Are you aligned to do things? So the one thing I, I find with financial advisors, what we do is we have, try and help people get their finances in order. And, and the thing is we become overwhelmed with all the work that has to be done to manage our financial life. It's quite a, it's quite a lot of things we have to do. It's not just a matter of buying a mutual fund or an investment or a stock or whatever we do. It goes way beyond that. You know, a financial planner, will easily get your portfolio into one place and then assist you in making things like a will, estate planning, that kind of stuff. That's what financial advi advisors does is they don't just buy you a fund or whatever. We look at the whole aspect of your life. So you don't have to worry about things. You go and enjoy your life and let your advisor worry about your money life and then every quarter or so hook up with them uh, either zoom or whatever and and make sure that you're where you want to be or where you're heading um, and, and that's important when you talk about those emotions that can get in the way and that emotion of obviously it's it's a it's your money and it's your life and there's so much tied up in it and having someone in your corner who is separated from that can be helpful yeah, and think back to crisis, you know, if, um, if I don't know how long, if you've been investing over 20 years, look back to all the crises that we had. You know, the last one was the pandemic, right? There might, there'll be more in the future, but think about uh, the pandemic. Did we sell our portfolio? Did we panic? What did we do? And more importantly, how did we get through it, right? What actions did we take to get through it? The last one was the financial crisis in 08, 09. And of course, the terrorist attack, 20 years since it happened. Um, and those things really affect our money. So we have to sit back and think back, how did we re react? And more importantly, what do we do on a go forward basis? Um, another thing I find that financial advisors that we do is a finan your financial advisor will work alongside with your accountant to support, you know, maybe tax issues, uh, minimize the amount of taxes that you pay, things like that. Many of us maybe can't do it, but it's always it's always worth it to sit down with your advisor and have a look at where your taxes are and maybe work with your accountant to figure out, can you do things better? Can you minimize the amount of taxes that you pay? And those are kind of the things that we, that we as financial advisors try and do to help to get along, right? Yeah, and that's a huge thing, obviously, in Canada. We know we pay a lot of taxes and we're thinking about how we're going to do that. We're thinking about you know, how we can try and save a little bit on that, how we can try and you know, keep as much of our hard-earned money for our own families as possible. We're not talking about cheating here. We're talking about you know, working, working with the system in order to take advantage of you know, rebates, things like that right. and yeah. that are that exist for a reason you know governments put those things in place in order to sort of guide what they see as positive mm. behavior and why not take advantage of those things so that your family can use the most money possible and that's that we're not we're we you may fancy ourselves you know investment hobbyists or something right. like that but we're not tax experts no. but it's important to you know have people or know people who are part of that team and part of that world and, and the rules are always changing i mean mm -hmm. i don't know about taxes myself but um i deal with accountants and so on and they know that's their job many people would go around uh tax time and buy the turbo tax whatever they buy and figure you know that's the best way to do it but many mm -hmm. times sometimes it's not the right thing to do um so taxes are a big issue now and i think on a go forward it'll be a bigger issue uh, because of some of the changes might be coming down the pipe right so well, I, I think that that's another important thing when you're when you're dealing with a professional when you're dealing with a financial advisor like yourself kelvin there are um things that you know because you're working with other customers with other clients yes. that that's the right. average person doesn't know i only know what's happening in my own yard right i only know how to cut my grass well i some of it can be applied but the 
there's an expertise that you get when you've been handling multiple accounts, multiple clients. You've seen where people go wrong. You've seen where people go right. And you can help use that wealth of knowledge to help all of us navigate our financial lives. And, and that's a good point that you brought up because I see a lot of things after, you know, 30 years of doing this, I see a lot of things that people do right mm -hmm. and people do wrong. So my job is just to give you those experiences and fix what problem you may have and, and move on. You know, when you work, uh, when you work with a financial, lab, we set up, we set up goals and stuff, we, you know, set up goals on how to achieve, how to achieve them more importantly. When you set your goals, you might let your emotions color them. Mm -hmm. That's one of the big problems. A financial advisor will give advice on setting your goals without any emotional bias. So we kind of take away the emotions. You say what you want, and not only long-term. I think people need to, to have some short-term goals. And if you can achieve those short-term goals, you'll certainly achieve the long-term ones, you know? Um, if we, with this pandemic, maybe hopefully next couple of years coming to an end, we might be able to travel and do things normally again. Um, so plan those kind of stuff. Maybe after, so after the break, we'll, I'll talk about some other things that we need to do or of how a financial advisor can help you assist in your money life. That's coming up here on Your Life, Your Money, talking about how we can work on our financial planning with the help of someone like Kelvin to walk us through things, understand our financial planning better, to see past our emotions and see past some of the things that scare us or excite us or, or get us all riled up in our financial lives. And really the help of a solid financial advisor is the first place to start with getting a better financial plan. And Kelvin's one of the best in the country. And that's not me saying that. That's not him saying that. That is, that's actually been ranked. Kelvin is one of the top financial planners in the country. And you can have access to him by booking an appointment with him at askkelvin.ca. That's ask K E L V I N dot C A. And you can call him anytime 416 457 7526. That's 416 457 plan. More of your life, your money, continuing here on Global News Radio 640 Toronto. You are listening to a paid commercial program. Unless otherwise identified, the guests on the program are employees of or otherwise represent the advertiser. The opinions expressed therein are those of the advertiser and do not necessarily reflect the views and policies of Global News Radio 640 Toronto. And welcome back to Your Life, Your Money here on Global News Radio 640 Toronto. Chris Preston here, joined as always by Kelvin. The money guy, askkelvin.ca is his website, askkelvin.ca. And you can give him a call, 416-457-7526. That's 416-457-PLAN. If you want to book a call with Kelvin, the website, askkelvin.ca, is a great place to do it. That way you know that you're going to actually have him. It's not going to go to voicemail. I know, Kelvin, uh, you try to get to all your calls as soon as possible, but this is a great tool that's on the website, askkelvin.ca. You can see a picture of a sharply dressed Kelvin Rampersad, <laughs> and you can also uh, book a call right at the top right-hand corner. Schedule a call. You give that a click, and you can actually go into Kelvin's schedule and see times that he has available to take your calls. 30-minute free complimentary calls with Kelvin, the money guy. That way you've got a booked call with him. You know, it's going to happen at that time. And then you can chat with him about whatever, you know, the money issue you have. If you've got a financial advisor and you're looking for a second opinion, you can book an appointment, askkelvin.ca. If you don't have a financial advisor and you've just been going it alone and you want to get, you know, pick his brain a little bit, see if there's something that he can help you with, askkelvin.ca. If you have never invested at all and you're thinking, well, geez, this is probably something I should get on, askkelvin.ca. You click on that link in the top right-hand corner so that you can schedule a call with Kelvin anytime. You look at his schedule, you know it's right there, and you know you're going to get in touch with him. Askkelvin.ca is the website. That's askkelvin.ca. And Kelvin, we've been talking about this hour about how a financial advisor can help you with your financial life and with your financial plan. And, you know, obviously first way to that is, is you can schedule a call with your financial advisor with a guy like Kelvin. 
with Kelvin, the money guy, and you can uh, start talking to him about, about your issues. You know, we've been talking about that, how they help, how you guys help with us and with our money lives. What else can, what can a financial advisor do to add to your financial awareness and your financial planning? So, you know, when I, when I think back over the last, before I get to that, when I think back over the last, say, 15 years, really, you know, 15, 20 years, the role of a financial planner has really changed and become more important. And I think, uh, you know, people that are getting to, re- to retire, actually anyone starting work, getting close to retirement, really have to seek out an advisor. Because like I said, we try and get your finances in order or help you. We support you in tax issues. We work on setting up your goals, what you want. And I think one of the important, they're all important, um, but we regularly review your finances. You know, unless you're highly disciplined, uh, you, you know, you tend to ignore regular reviews of your finances. And that's the most, that's one of the most important things I think. You know, a financial planner will manage your finances and review your investments um, on a regular basis every quarter or so. You know, it's our job um, to take away the emotions from what you do and look at your, your, your financial situation, every aspect of it, what you have, what you owe, where you're heading, that kind of stuff. So I find people don't uh, review those things uh, regularly. And I think many times it's because uh, we think we owe too much money or we don't have enough and we just ignore it. It's best to ignore it and leave it alone. It scares us, right? It's yeah. just, it's a daunting yeah. task. Yeah. Maybe it scares you because you don't think you have enough. Maybe you're overconfident. You think you do have enough, or maybe it's just, it's just a daunting task. Numbers are scary. Honestly, yeah. it's, a, it's a big heavy lift. And I think when you think about all the things that a family has to do, you know, get the kids off to school, get the kids involved and in, out of the house and doing things, uh, housework, home improvement, all the things that you've got to do in your life, you know, sitting down with a spreadsheet kind of keeps getting put off because it's not it's not one of the fun things right it's not the one of the things that makes you that you know spurs on your creative juices and like you said maybe there's some highly disciplined people who are sitting down they've got all their spreadsheets they've got their budgets and they know what's going in and what's going out and they also have a a little bit more knack for organization they're going to be checking up on their finances every quarter a lot of us are probably putting it off and I can, I can speak from, it's not just you out there. It's me too. <laughs> That's one of the things that gets put off. My wife and I have talked all the time about, you know, sitting down and actually putting pen to paper and mm. I can count on, you know, three times in the last 10 years that it's actually happened. That's not, that's not enough, right? You're talking about if you've got someone on your team, you've got a financial advisor, you've got someone checking that up quarterly and you're checking in with them and helping them navigate it well well also we help you financial advisors also help you to balance your emotions you know when the stock market crashes and your portfolio shows a big loss you know it's difficult not to panic right so we kind of balance your emotions um you know and help you make the right decisions and overcome um you know overcome some of those things um, so we help you think more logically and show you the best course of action. So we try and balance your emotions with, with, with what's really going on in the stock markets. As you know, when you look back in the stock markets over the last 20 years, there's been ups and downs and ups and downs, but most people would have doubled their money, if not triple. And there were some bad times and good times and just sit back and, you know, hire a financial advisor and you'll be surprised to know that people are paying the fees, but not getting the proper advice. Nothing is free. I know there's lots of um, commercials about all these role advisors and it's free and the fees and so on, but the computer don't take, don't take your emotions into account. And you're not really saving any money. When you do, when you do the analysis about uh, fees and things like that, everyone's paying a fee but many people are not getting the advice they need for themselves, right? So when you deal with a financial advisor, we save you your time and money. You do what you do best, right? 
and you hire somebody to do all the other things. Mm -hmm. Many times we try and fix things in our homes and guess what? It creates a bigger problem. We try and fix things in our car. We try and do all these things and we, I know I can't do anything. I don't know how to do anything at home because I have to hire someone, right? My wife gets mad at me. But I know about money. So that's the one thing that I do. Um, so you need, like I say, you need to hire people to look after your money and you do what you do best. If you do yeah, you so, know, when you're, when you're an expert on something, you can, you can do it right the first time. When you're not, when you're a novice and you're just hacking around trying to you know, change a light fixture in your house or something like that, it's, you're going to realize that the, that you know 15 minute job ends up taking 45 minutes because you end up having to do it two or three times and take it down right. and put it back up. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to do that with your money. You don't want to do that with your retirement savings, with you know your children's nest egg. You don't want to do that. That's it's far too important to mess around with, and it's not you don't have the safety net of being able to shut off the power at the switchboard. You only get well, a chance to do this once. Right. Well, look. Now that everything is getting back to normal, we're heading into the fall, you know, we're busy with work, with family, you know, with social commitments now that we may have. So you may not uh, want to spend time and effort managing your finances with, you know, with any doubt looming over your head um, to help you make the best decisions. It is better to have a financial advisor who already knows their stuff and can make decisions quickly for you. So you don't have to sit and ponder a lot of things mm -hmm. and move on. So that's why I say we make your, 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 your time and money more efficient and, and better ways to live your life. Um, another thing is the investment decisions um, that you make. Advisors will generally be better than those layman investments, you know, investors, which result in saving money and also do, getting a better return. They say when you use an independent financial advisor, you get about a 3% return higher than do it on your own. And, and I can see that. I can see why. It's because we do things that um, to force you into reviewing your portfolio, maybe making switches when the interest rates may change or whatever changes in the world, we help you think that way so that you're always in the right place. Not always, but most of the time you're in the right place and you're, and you're doing well. Um, so those are kind of things that a financial advisor helps you to do. Um, you know, and again, I think it's, I think we're more of a behavioral advisor than anything else. A little bit of a life coach on the side yeah. there too, right? Yeah. Just making yeah. sure that you're doing things, you know, factoring in your emotions and recognizing them and then checking against that and also being disciplined. Like we just talked about having the discipline to actually look at our finances on a regular basis, not to mm -hmm. be scared of them, not no. to be worried about them, you know, worried into indecision or anything like that, or, and also not to be overly confident. That's one of the things I always sort of chuckle about when I see those you know, robo advisor commercials, you've mm -hmm. got someone who is overly confident, overly cocky, judging some other you know, sibling or friend or coworker. So you're, you're not still using so-and-so like, right. yeah. well, like what makes you think you're so confident in your abilities? So, sorry, we're talking about someone who is using an expert who has years of experience helping mm -hmm. them. And that's why you get that, you know, 3% on average, higher return. It's the efficiency. It's the knowledge. It's the know-how. What are you paying for when you get a financial advisor? Years of experience. And, and financial planning has really evolved over the last, uh, again, 20 years. Before when I started way back then, it was more of picking an investment or a mutual fund or something and, you know, hoping for the best. But I think now... As we age, as, the, as we're aging, remember there's a thousand people in Canada turning 65 every day. So these people, when you're in your 50s and your 60s, you really need to talk out uh, your money problems and, and have some emotions attached to it. And I think that's why we need the independent advisor, because, you know, financial planning is not an easy task, you know. Mm -hmm. It, it becomes more complex when our behavioral aspects, you know, such as biases and emotions take over, right? So it's a, it's a great idea. It's a good idea to consider getting the services of a, of a professional financial advisor 
he does it for a living, not just like part time or reading a book or something, you know. So, and one other thing is what I find, Chris, is you don't need to give them full control yet, you know, but work with the advisor to improve your financial future. Along the way, what will happen is you'll end up giving them full control of, of what you do with, with your money. They say that when you're in your 30s, 30s and 40s, you, you tend to have three advisors, one at the bank, maybe an independent and yourself. And when you hit your 50s, you're pretty much two advisor, yourself and the bank or your independent advisor. And then when you hit your 60s, you're pretty much consolidated into one advisor, typically an independent financial advisor, because they look at your whole picture. They don't just look at one aspect of your life. You, you know, when you said about role advisors, well, they don't look at your will, if you have a will, they don't look at your estate planning, I'm going to save all this money. And what's going to happen when I pass away and my spouse pass? What's going to happen? Well, the robo advisors don't look at things like that. And we, and we tend to miss out on that kind of stuff. And, and sometimes that's more important than, you know, investing your money. Because if you invest your money wisely and take a balanced approach, you'll, you'll do well. But then what happens later on in my life? What's the tax implications on my RSPs, and, you know, my lifts, and all those kind of things that we do. So the financial planner... But a financial advisor goes well beyond just buying stocks and things like that. I mean, you can do that on your own, right? Exactly. And that's where, especially as you approach ret retirement, you've got to start to really think about those things in those details. It's not just about, you know, units in, units out, accumulating. Right. It's about yeah. actually, you know, playing the game, doing the dance, dealing with the tax man, dealing with your estate and your will and so much more. There are so many things that you can add in. Insurance is another thing that we've talked about before. And uh, we'll talk more about you know, getting a financial advisor, how to you know, work out your financial plan, how to fix it and make it work. So we'll continue on your life, your money, talking about financial planning questions that we should be asking ourselves. And that's something that Calvin's going to help us with. Don't forget, you can call Calvin anytime, 416 457 Seven five two six. That's four one six four five seven. Plan and don't forget, askkelvin.ca. I'm telling you not to forget a lot of things. Askkelvin.ca <laughs> is an important one. Ask k e l v i n dot c a. And while you're there, you can schedule a call with Kelvin. You click on the link, you pick a time, and then you've got your call scheduled for three a free thirty minute call with Kelvin, the money guy. Again, ask k e l v i n .ca. More of your life, your money continuing here on Global News Radio, 640 Toronto. You are listening to a paid commercial program. Unless otherwise identified, the guests on the program are employees of or otherwise represent the advertiser. The opinions expressed therein are those of the advertiser and do not necessarily reflect the views and policies of Global News Radio 640 Toronto. Welcome back to Your Life, Your Money here on Global News Radio 640 Toronto. I am Chris Creston, joined as always by Kelvin, the money guy. Don't forget, you can use this new feature on his website. It's not that new. It's been going on for a couple of months now, but uh, I took the time to explore it, and I really hope that you do too. AskKelvin.ca, that's ask K E L V I N dot C-A, where you can book a complimentary call with Kelvin, free 30-minute call to chat with Kelvin. You pick the time, you pick the date, you have the call with Kelvin, you talk about your money life, and uh, it's an easy tool to use, and it gets you started and gets you on on the line with Kelvin so you can pick his brain so you can you know tap into his years of experience and that's what we've been talking about here you know, what's wrong with our financial plan how do we fix it and we've been talking about some of the biggest problems over the last uh, half hour we've been talking about the biggest problems with your financial plan and uh, now let's move on to how do we fix it what should we be asking ourselves Kelvin yeah, so many times, you know, we confuse about a lot of things when it comes to financial planning. There's certain things we need to ask, you know, certain questions we should ask, we should all ask ourselves. And one of it is, um, you know, there's no really order, but one thing is, you know, what should, what should be my asset allocation or how much equity or bonds or cash should I have? We hear it on the radio all the time, 
commercials and so on. And what does that all, what does asset allocation really mean? Mm -hmm. Some people don't know. It's just a word and it goes, ah, oh, man, I don't know. So asset allocation means how should I divvy up my money based on my age? So there's certain, in life, you know, there's so many rules, right? And if you follow them, you'll get, you'll end up getting all right where you want to get to. Um, so when you look at your asset allocation, you, you, for example, you take your age minus 100, and that'll tell you how much equity or stocks you should have in your portfolio. So if you're, you know, if you're 30, if you're 30 years old, 30% uh, of your debt, of your investment should be in debt and 70% uh, percent or in equities. So what that really means is, like I say, take your age minus 100, and that will tell you how much exposure to the stock markets that you want to be in. But like everything else with rules, there's always some side effects and some, you know, rules we may have to break. So when we look at our age and we say, okay, we're 60 years old, so 40% of our money should be in equities and 60% should be in, you know, bonds and so on. But when we look at the overall world, if I'm 60, I'm going to live till 90, I guess. Um, so if I invest my money in bonds and so on with low interest rates, will I, will I have enough money when I'm 80? And the answer probably is no, because you're not making any money anymore because interest rates are at all time low. The Bank of Canada just said they're keeping interest rates uh, low till late 2022. And we just did a big show on, uh, on uh, inflation. Right. Yeah. And when that's, and now when that starts to raise its head, you know, you can't make 2% on your money anymore because inflation is going to be 2.5, something like that. So you're actually losing money. So you really have to make adjustments to what should my asset allocation be and how much equity should I have? So some of the old rules are changing. So if you don't change, you know, they say, if you don't change, you die. Right. So yeah. we need to sit down and, and ask ourselves those questions. One of the other things that people ask themselves or should ask themselves is how much money will I need in retirement? I don't know if people ever sit and think about that. Um, I don't know. Yeah, you're right. Because I don't think people even think, Kelvin, that necessarily how much money they need now. They know, know how much the next bill is. And mm -hmm. I think that that's sort of the way that a lot of people are going. It's like we're driving, staring at you know, the edge of our windshield and not yeah. looking at the road ahead of us and not taking really a big picture approach to it. And, you know, maybe that's a good way to, you know, make sure that you're paying your bills, but it's not a good way to make sure you're getting ahead. Well, you know, when you get into retirement, you may spend less money on, you know, you spend on savings, housing, you know, tax, you know, transportation to work, things like that. Mm -hmm. But maybe you have more hobbies. Maybe yeah. your utilities has gone up or more importantly, healthcare. Maybe, you know, you need more health care. I don't know. So you really have to ask yourself how much, looking at all these things, how much money do I need in, in retirement? You know, we live in the best country in the world, I think. Okay. We have CPP and we have the old age. And many people don't think about those things when they do their calculations. I mean, the average Canadian gets about 800 bucks CPP and this, the old age is about $620, right? If you're, if you're married, you're getting, you know, what's that about maybe $2,000, something like that every month coming into your household. So you have to figure how much do I need? And there's lots of rules out there. It says, you know, you need 20 times your income when you, when you retire, you know, you need 70 to 80% of pre-retirement income. Maybe that's not for you. Maybe you don't live that kind of life. Maybe you're, you know, so you have to really sit and say, how much money do I need? Not my friends and neighbors and everybody else. What do I need? And use those things to help you get to where you want to get to. Remember, to give you $1,000 a month from the time you're 65 to 90, you need about 210000 earning you 5% somewhere. So if you can achieve that, plus your CPP in your old age, you're okay. And if you want to live a better life, then save more money. So that's really some of the things you want to look at um, as you move into that retirement age, right? You ever hear stories of people retiring when they're like in their 40s? There's always some article or something. Yeah. In, the, 
in the papers, right? About people that, yeah. Yeah, this guy invested well and he's retired in his 40s and now he gets yeah. to travel the world and, you know. Yeah, so, but, but when you look at how much money they got, they don't have a lot, but they live a very simple, basic life. Right. You know, and they lead, they they live on their uh, on their needs, not their wants. And some of those things we have to kind of sit and adjust ourselves. You know, life is you know you live once, right? Life is fun. So what actually life is what you make it. We should all be living well, saving a little bit of our money, and planning for our future, whatever that may be. And uh, get a financial advisor because they will help you sort through all this maze of investments and taxes and all this kind of stuff that you need to do. And you'll fare well, right? And that's so important to think about. And you brought up that, you know, your needs and your wants and the guy who retires early, but it's only living on his needs. And, mm. you know, you're only living once. I think you got to make a little bit of room for your wants. And that's part of having a financial advisor too, is you've got uh, the ability to, you know, invest your money, but also still live, you know, take that vacation when you're able to take that sure. time off, buy that thing that makes you happy. Yeah. Those yeah. things, are, those wants are important. So you, we're not talking about save all your money so that you can, you know, stockpile it. It's have the right amount of money that'll keep you happy yes. through retirement. They say money doesn't buy you happiness, but money can make you feel secure. Money right. can make you, you know, buy the things that make your life easier, that make your life happier and worth living. You know, they pay for those hobbies. They pay for the sports. They pay for the thing, the travel. That's how you, you get ahead is having a financial advisor that so that you can focus on those wants. Financial advisor is going to help you with those needs and make sure that you're you know, navigating the, the course adequately and to a superior fashion. And, and, and I guess, and that's what we do, is we help you lead a balanced life. Mm -hmm. You really need to balance your emotions and your money and everything else. And if you do so, a lot of the stress will go away. So how much money, do I, money will I need when I retire? Once you figure out, like, how much, the next question is how much I need to invest every month to achieve my retirement goals. Many people don't know. Many people have no idea. I try and save this. I try and save that. You know, if you, if you just started to work and would like to have a very simple lifestyle and, re, you know, on a retirement age around 60, you know, you could do it by saving 10% of your income every year. Take 10% and, and actually that's one of the golden rule of financial planning. Take 10% of what you make and stash it away. And if you do so consistently, you will retire comfortably. You know, if you are planning for an early retirement, you know, start with saving 20% of your income if you could. So it's all, it's all what, what you want. You know, some of the rules say that if you're in your early 30s, save 10% of your money for basics. 15% for comfort and 20% to escape, you know, to get away and do all those things. If you're late, I know by a decade, then add 5% more to each of those categories and you'll be fine. It's not complicated. You know, after the break, we'll talk a little bit about more. What kind of questions should you ask yourself when it comes to financial planning? All that and more coming up here on Your Life, Your Money. AskKelvin.ca is the website where you can find out more about Kelvin. You can book a complimentary call with Kelvin there as well. That's AskKelvin.ca. More of Your Life, Your Money continues here on Global News Radio, 640 Toronto. You are listening to a paid commercial program. Unless otherwise identified, the guests on the program are employees of or otherwise represent the advertiser. The opinions expressed therein are those of the advertiser and do not necessarily reflect the views and policies of Global News Radio 640 Toronto. Welcome back to Your Life, Your Money here on Global News Radio 640 Toronto. I'm Chris Creston, joined as always by Kelvin the Money Guy. AskKelvin.ca is the website. Ask K E L V I N.ca. We're talking about what's wrong with our financial plans and how do we fix them. We've been talking about some questions that you should ask yourself as you're trying to navigate these things, as you're you know, going to call up your financial advisor, or you're going to book an appointment with Kelvin at askkelvin.ca. What kind of questions should you have in mind? Yeah. So, you know, how much money I need to invest 
to achieve my retirement goal. Well, one of the things we need to ask ourselves is how, in how many years will my money double? Mm -hmm. And again, rules in our financial planning world, it's called the rule of 72. It's the rate of doubling money. It's not a science. Mm -hmm. So the rule is if you, if you take 72 divided by whatever interest rate you may get, it'll equal your doubling period of money. You know, remember when school A plus B equals C? Mm -hmm. that kind of stuff (laughs) (laughs) so if you take uh 70 if so let's say you earn a 10 percent return on your money just for simplicity's sake uh 72 divided by 10 is 7.2 so it'll take you 7.2 years to double your money um and again you work the math backwards and say to yourself you know uh if i wanted to double my money in five years then I need to earn a 14% return. So it works backwards also. So there's so many parameters that you have to sit and think about. And of course, you know, there's risk involved depending on, you know, where you, where you sit and what, what you want. So that's where the financial advisor comes into play is to sit down with you and analyze all that stuff. And first, and ask you things like, you know, Chris, I know how you're going to feel if you make 7%, Hmm. but more importantly, how are you going to feel if you lose seven? Right. It's a different so, perspective when, when you put it that yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. So those are the questions you need to ask yourself. Like we all know we're making money. We're happy and no, we're, you know, we're good. When we have a year of downturn, like in 2018, uh, and people don't remember that, um, you know, how did you feel? Who were you mad at? Your advisor? Who, who were you mad at? Right. Now, we're in 2021, and when we look back to 2018, it didn't matter. So that just goes to show invest, invest your money wisely, take a balanced approach, and go and live your life and have fun and let your advisor worry about those things, the money issues for you, you know? So, you know, financial planning is not an easy task. It becomes more complex when behavioral aspects such as biases and emotions, you know, like I say, come into play. It's therefore a good idea to consider getting the services of a financial, a professional financial advisor. And you don't need to give them full control of your money, right? And questions you want to ask yourself is, what should my asset allocation be? How much money will I need in retirement? How much do I need to invest to get to my retirement goal? And how will my money double? How, you, how many years will it take to double? And if you ask yourself those questions, I think you'll live a great life now and into retirement. So, you know, sit down with your advisor and plan some strategy. The fall is coming. Take time to change because we're setting into a change of the season. So change what you may do, reassess where you are, and life, your money life will be great. And it's, you know, it's as simple as starting a conversation with Kelvin, the money guy. If you've got a financial advisor, no, give him a call. If, you, if you've got a financial advisor, but you'd like a second opinion, Kelvin is there. AskKelvin.ca to book a, a call with him. And you can always, if you've never thought about your investments, maybe you're just sort of doing, got it on autopilot and you're just sort of rolling through the years. I talked to a guy recently who was telling me, well, you know what? I just find I put stuff into something safe. I put it into GICs and then I feel comfortable. Everything else I save in cash. And it's just, well, neither of those things are going to help you get ahead, <laughs> right? You, you want to work until you're 90? Yeah, yeah. Be, be my guest. You, you, you've got, uh, if you want to make sure that you've got enough safe for retirement, safe for the top period of time when you just can't physically work anymore, right. you've got to make sure that you're getting ahead and your money is growing. And that's why you got to get someone like Kelvin, the money guy on your side. 416-457-7526. That's 416-457-PLAN. And you can visit his website, askkelvin.ca. That's ask K-E-L-V-I-N.ca. And you can book a complimentary call with him there right on the website. That's Ask Kelvin. .ca. Kelvin, thanks again for you know, helping us out through our money lives and enlightening us here on the weekend. Yes, Chris, have a great day and take care. Thank you again. Don't forget, askkelvin.ca is the website. Stay tuned to Global News Radio, 
640 Toronto. The preceding was a paid commercial program. Unless otherwise identified, the guests on the program are employees of or otherwise represent the advertiser. The opinions expressed therein are those of the advertiser and do not necessarily reflect the views and policies of Global News Radio 640 Toronto.